Hey there, it's Sharon from Quick Base Junkie. I'm coming to you from my home office because I wanted to share a couple of examples of how you can use API buttons in your Quick Base. Welcome to Quick Base Junkie. I help Quick Base builders learn fast to deliver more. Now I've got a course, it's actually a premium course, where I walk you through how to use API buttons in general, walking you through step-by-step, -step, detail, detail by detail, breaking down all that complexity and giving you just a ton of resources. But these examples are so extraordinary. They get the gears churning in terms of how APIs can be used, how valuable they are, and even maybe some ideas of how you can improve processes through QuickBase for your own business. So I wanted to extract these examples out of the course and put them here for you to use, but I am gonna hide some of the details in terms of the formulas themselves. And if you get into the course, you'll be able to get all of those formulas all of the all of the downloads that you can literally copy and paste the information into your own quick base but i'm still giving you a ton of value right here in this video examples on how to use those apis and if you want more information on the course you can head over to quickbasejunkie.com courses but for now let's watch that video let's take a look at a very popular time tracking example the scenario is that when time is spent on a task, it must be logged in a quick base. Each time work is started or stopped on a task, it's logged on a child record. Effort does not take place continuously. So people are logging in, logging out throughout the day in different chunks of time. Our objective is that with one click, we can create a new log on the task with today's date and time when the work starts edit the latest time log with today's date when work stops, and prevent problematic scenarios such as attempting to add a time log when the task has not been saved. The setup for this quick base is that we've got a task table, which is the parent to our time log table. The time log table has the fields start date, start time, now I did separate these two for a reason. It's often much easier to deal with dates and times when you have them in separate fields as opposed to having a date and time field. I also find it's easier for users to manually input information into these fields because the format is much more clear when they're separate. So we've got our start date and time followed by our stop date and time. Then we've got our duration in order to calculate the time between the start and stop. We're using the timestamp function as shown here to calculate duration. Because we have that relationship between tasks and time logs, we automatically have the related task field that's created as part of that relationship. Let's take a look now at the task table. Now your task table might have things like task owner, due date, notes, but that's not really what's interesting here in terms of the API button that we're creating. What we need are several summary fields in order to support the functions in our formula. The summary fields are created on the relationship and we'll have one to count the number of time logs that are associated with that particular relationship. We'll have another to calculate the maximum record ID number. So this will give us the record ID number for the latest time log. So if there are three time logs, it'll give us the record ID number for the most recent one. Now we're gonna carry this same one back over into the time log table and look it up using a lookup field. The reason for this is when we have the record ID number for the most recent child record in that table, we can then look up other fields on that child record. So what we want to look up is the max stop date for the latest child record. And the reason for this is so that way we can determine whether or not the latest record has been stopped yet right? If it's been started and it needs to stop, or if it's already been stopped, in which case we would need to start a new record. 
So very important, this relationship that we have going on here. And that's set up by simply setting the max log ID equal to the record ID. Let's take a look at how this is all structured within the QuickBase. Here I'm on the task table, so let's take a look at one of these tasks. We can see we have various documentation for the task, but what we're really interested in are these time logs. So here you can tell I've got a relationship between the tasks and the time logs where we log the start, date, time, stop date and time, and calculate the duration. Now the traditional relationship creates this add log button, but when I press this button, all it does is create a new record with that relationship already determined between the two. It does not populate the start date, time, stop date, or stop time. That's what we want our button to do. So in order to make that happen, we had to create several new fields within the relationship. Let's take a look at those. We'll open the relationship. Click one more time. You can see on the left here, we've got several summary fields that have been added. The first is the number of logs. This is just essentially the count of the number of logs that are associated to the particular parent of that record. Let's go back and look at the others. We've got the max log ID number. So here the field we're summarizing is the record ID and we're choosing the maximum. So we want the max record ID that would be associated to any particular task. You notice I've also taken that max log ID number and created a lookup field on the child table, which is the time logs. Now it's very important that I do that before I do the next one, because I'm gonna need that max log ID number in order to calculate this max stop date. Taking a look here, we are summarizing the stop date where that max log ID number is equal to the record ID number and with the maximum there. This will give me the stop date for the most recent child record. Let's go back to the relationship. Now with all of these set up, we can begin to look at our formula. Let's start building out our formula. So here we have two different functions being performed by the same button and essentially four different checks being made in order to determine what scenario the record is in at the time the button is pressed. Let's take a look at this in the QuickBase. It'll start to make a lot more sense. All right, time to upgrade our existing add log button. Let's go ahead and edit the properties. And now we can replace this basic formula with our new optimize formula, right? This has the start and stop functions, as well as all the checks for the different phases that a task can be in. Let's make a few more changes. We change our link text to now say start slash stop. And let's give it a nice color. We'll save. All right, that's already beginning to look a lot better. Let's jump into this existing task and see what happens when we push the button. You may have noticed, but you can activate URL buttons in either edit or view mode, which is kind of handy. Let's go ahead and hit our start stop on this record. So notice this record has been saved. It's got a record ID number. However, there are no current logs. And looky here, here's our timestamp. We've got the start date and the start time. Now, if I go ahead and press the button again, same button, you can now see I've got the stop date and stop time. Now I press these so close together, there's virtually no duration that shows you how it starts and stops the time. Let's do it one more time. We'll start. And actually, let's come back to this a little later and hit stop. For now, let's go back to our task table. And let's imagine we've started a brand new task. Now notice on this brand new task, we do not have our start stop button. This is because the task has not yet been saved. 
Now you may want to opt to include some messaging uh, along these lines for your users to let them know that they need to save the record before they can add any time logs. Clearly our formula is working because you can't push the button when the task has not yet been saved. Let's head back to our previous task. Now I can hit that stop time. Again, the record is displayed in display mode. It's identified that the latest child record had not yet been stopped. And so it gave that stop function to the button and has now stopped the clock and calculated the duration. Essentially, this button has three different functions. It can either not show up, act as a start button, and act as a stop button. I'm sure there's a lot of different places that you can imagine using this in your QuakeBase, especially if you're tracking time. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and subscribe using the link below. You can also drop me a comment and let me know what you thought and what you enjoyed the most. And then head over to QuakeBaseJunkie.com to grab one of those free downloads. <laughs> Bye for now. Using the link below. Using the link below. Bye for now.